In this video, we're going to take a look at Boolean values in Python. Let's create a variable here. I'll call it just value, which normally would be a terrible name for a variable because it doesn't describe what the variable actually is at all. But in this case, I want something completely non-descriptive, so it's a perfectly fine name. Now we've seen that you can set variables equal to, for example, integers. And let's do a print on this. And let's also print the type of it. And you can probably remember what this is going to display now. So if we run this, we see it prints 10 and it tells us that the type of the thing that value refers to is int, integer, a whole number. We can also set variables equal to floats, like 10.5. Now we find that this is a float, which is the type of thing in Python that represents floating point values. We've also seen strings, so we could set this to some string like this, some, some text in quotes. And then the type is str. Now sometimes people call these primitive types just because in some programming languages there are certain types that are implemented in a simpler way than more complex types. So in some programming languages, you have variables that can simply represent a little area of computer memory, and you have other variables that represent something more complex. But Python doesn't have that division. In Python, everything is an object, which is a more complex type of entity than just a little bit of computer memory. But I just mentioned this primitive types thing just in case you come across it. Sometimes int, float, and perhaps even string are referred to as primitive types, even though it doesn't really apply to Python. Now, there's something else that we could set a variable equal to. We could set it equal to true. Notice true has a capital letter here. It's actually a built-in keyword in Python 3. And if we run this, we find the type of the variable now, or the type of the thing it refers to, I should probably say, strictly speaking, is bool. Bool stands for Boolean. And this comes from Boolean algebra, which was devised by George Boole. A Boolean variable has the value true or false, one of those two things. So we can also set this to false, and again, you need a capital F for false. What can we do with this? Well, let's take a look at something called the equality test operator. I'm going to print the result of taking a string, let's write hello, and comparing it to another string with a double equal sign. Now, a double equal sign is known as the equality test operator. It tests if two things can be considered equal or not. A single equal sign is the assignment operator. It takes whatever's on the left of it and sets it equal to, or makes it refer to, whatever's on the right of it. Two equal signs performs a different function, which we tend to associate with an, just one equal sign in mathematics, for example. But two equal signs, the equality test operator, compares if two things are equal or not. So let's just take a look at what this does. So this returns true. The operator is what we call a binary operator, meaning it requires two things to work. So it's got this and this. Now, if I change one of these strings, so it's not equal to the other string anymore, the equality test operator returns false now. So the operator is looking at these two things and we can say it's returning a value, it's returning false. But don't worry about the lingo, only worry about whether you can use this code or not. Now we could set the return value of this operator equal to a variable. Let's call it is equal and set that equal to the return value of this equals equals operator. So this bit here is going to evaluate to true or return true 
if the strings are equal and then store that in this variable. If they are not equal, it will evaluate to false. And again, that will get stored in this variable. So we can print this out. And let's just print the type of it as well. But you know what the type of it is going to be. It's going to be bool. Let's run it. And there we go, false and bool. We can use equals equals the equality test operator to compare lots of different things in Python, including ints. With floats, it's not so reliable and is best avoided because floating point values are not stored in a precise way. They can't be because you can only use a certain limited amount of computer memory to store them and floats by their nature are not inherently limited in that way. Try this code out for yourself, verify that it works. And we're going to be moving on to using this to create if statements, to create conditionals that can run code only under certain circumstances. Hello, you've been watching a free sample from my Python and machine learning for complete beginners course. I'm uploading enough videos from the start of the course to get you started with Python and machine learning. The full course is absolutely massive. If you're interested in it, please click the link in the description. The complete course covers not only basic Python, but also some fairly advanced Python, even some desktop programming stuff, and then goes on to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Until next time, happy coding.